okay so uh, that allows me to compute the matrix so let's try that uh, in MATLAB so uh, it, let's actually demonstrate something that is a different from what we have in the finite difference case so let's instead of having a uniformly spaced grid we actually try to uh, demonstrate the uh, how fine element is uh, is flexible in the kind of uh, meshes you choose so what i'm going to do is well, how many elements do you want 20, 20? all right and uh, let's make a bunch of x that is uh, random so so I, I have 20 elements that means i have n minus 1 interior points, right? I want them to be completely random. So this is my x, uh, just a random, but I want to sort them, x equal to sort x. So they are sorted, uh, uh, you can see they are very, very non-uniformly spaced. And let's add a point 0 and a point 1 onto the beginning and end of x. All right. Good. So let's loop over the matrix to assign all of these uh, quantities. Okay. So, first of all, the diagonal elements. So, A diagonal elements are equal to basically the summation of the reciprocal of the differences in the adjacent grids. So, I will just do 1 divided by x2 to end minus x1 to end minus 1. Uh, is that true? Actually, actually let me let me make my indices a little bit clearer. Um, if I start with x, uh, okay, so, so let me make make sure I know what I'm doing here. So let's make sure I have x0 to start with. Let me try this. And, uh, um, well, let me do x1 because I'm in MATLAB. So this is xn plus 1 here, right? And x2 here. So my first my first h, because my I'm satisfying the boundary condition, therefore my first h is like this. So this is my, this is actually, I'm starting with h2, right? Okay, I'm starting with H2, so uh, what I'll be doing is this one will definitely start with uh, X3 minus X2, and this is going to be X2 minus X1. So what I'll be doing is actually it'll be 3 to end minus 2 to end minus 1 so this is going to be my x i plus 1 minus x i term plus 1 divided by x 2 to end minus 1 minus x 1 to end minus 2 uh, is that right okay so let me see if I get the right yeah I get 19 numbers that should be the right number because that's how many interior grid points I have. Therefore, how many basis function I should have right? to represent a function with zero uh, boundary conditions. OK, so A off diagonal is going to be equal to this. And I want to stress that this, uh, the, the matrix A here is symmetric. Because if you, if you replace if you replace this, if you exchange the indices i and j, I will get exactly the same numbers, right? So what I'll get is 1 divided by x 3 to, not 3 to end. Uh, so the off diagonal actually has one less entry. So 3 to end minus 1 minus x 2 to end minus 2. Right, so so this is because I'm only going to be in integrating over the interior intervals. I shouldn't be integrating f um, 
over the interval from x1 to x2, nor should I be integrating over the interval from n minus 1 to n. Okay, so now I have my diagonal entries and off diagonal entries. So my a should be diag of a diag plus diag of a off diag 1 plus diag of a off diag minus 1. This is my matrix A. Uh, the numbers, I can't really see anything from the numbers uh, because, uh, well, uh, I get a pretty non-uniform mesh, right? So if I, if I plot my x here, I think I, yeah, I just uh, get a, a pretty, I get a huge interval over here. Uh, they're just uh, not very informative. Okay, so now I have my matrix A. It's time to also construct my B. So my B actually depends on what uh, function f, what right-hand side function f I will be looking at, right? So, so my B is uh, is this. So let's first uh, start with uh, f equal to one. So if f is equal to one f equal to 1, my bj is equal to integration of 0 to 1 hj times f, which is equal to 1 dx. So it's basically the, the, the integral of one of my basis functions. So if my basis function is like this hat function, then my integral would be integration from xj minus 1 to xj of hj plus integration of xj to xj plus 1 of hj. Okay, so within each of these intervals, hj is a linear function that goes from 0 to 1. Okay, so what's the area underneath that function? What's the area underneath this function? Uh, it's just a half of the area of this square, which is actually the interval length, right? So this is basically half of xj minus xj uh, minus 1. This is basically uh, half of xj plus 1 minus xj, right? Or I can just... Uh, Put them together, xj plus 1 minus xj minus 1 divided by 2. So let's compute that. So I have my b should be equal to x uh, did it plus 1 minus 1. So 3 to n minus x 1 to n minus 2 divided by 2. Right? So yeah, I get, uh, so the dimension at least is right. All right, now let's solve it. I have my x, let's say zeros, n plus one, one. So that's my x with the boundary conditions. I should set my two to n minus one, which is the interior points uh, question. What happened to the negative sign in the off diagonal elements of a? Oh, good, good catch, good catch. My A actually has to be negative for the off diagonals, yeah. So, so otherwise I wouldn't get the right answer. So this should be minus and minus, right. So at least we have the qualitatively the same uh, signs as the finite difference matrix for Poisson's equation, right? We had the diagonal being like minus <coughs> 2 over delta x squares, right, and the off diagonals being 1 over delta x squares. So this is also, uh, that this is kind of the, um, the negative of that, because the diagonal seems to be positive, the off diagonals are negative, right? Okay, so thanks for the catch. My x2 to n minus 1 should be equal to a backslash b. Oh, minus, right, another minus sign because uh, here I'm solving, uh, here I'm solving a u plus b equal to zero. So, oh, sorry, did I lose my x? Ah, I should be calling this u, I shouldn't call it x. Sorry, uh, let, let, me, let me do it again. Uh, 
so so let me do this thing again the this is still the same this is correct and uh, what I didn't do correctly is is constructing a so I should be doing minus the off diagonals and my B's are also correct so now I shouldn't call my solution X I should call my solution U U is zeros n plus 1 1 uh, and the u to 2 to n minus 1 should be equal to a backslash b minus sign all right so now I have my solution u and uh, let's plot it x and u let's uh, put uh, this all right so uh, looks like I have a function with uh, is it right? It looks like I might have a sign problem somewhere. Oh. When you did the integrals, when I did the integrals, you just did the zero to one, but there should be a minus in front of the h term. In when I did the integrals here. No, when you're doing it this particular problem. For the x i's and x j's. For the x i's and x j's. Oh yes. Oh yes. A is actually equal to minus of that. Sorry. Uh. So my a i j right. So so my my a i j s actually should have been. Uh, yeah. Right. Right, so this should be my, uh, this should be my solution. Right, so the second derivative of u plus one should be equal to zero. So you should have a negative second order derivative, and uh, this should be what the function look like. All right. Okay. Uh, right. So so what we are plotting here is actually the solution itself because what we get is a piecewise linear function and the value of the function at these nodes are equal to the linear combination coefficients which are what I'm solving here when I put minus a backslash b. All right, any questions on that? So that's how we construct a finite element matrix and uh, solve for Find element solutions.